Uh, best of after dark, 1982. Doug Parkinson, Phil Jarrett from Playboy magazine, Miles, well-known English rock journalist, and Kirkpatrick, Marilyn Chambers is with us. What a nice way to start 83. John English, Doug Ashtown, and the very funny Hebe Jeebies. We're going to start musically with David Bowie, follow that with the Tom Robinson Band. Again, a happy new year to you. Thank you for joining us on After Dark. Stay. Ground control to Major Tom. Let's find out about sheet metal working to having hit records around the world, John Paul Young. How did you do that? What was the transition? Um, the transition was nearly made for me by the, by the boss, actually. <laughs> because I... <laughs> well, you know, it, whenever you start off in show business, you've got to do a little bit at a time. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, you used to work nights here and turn up late for work the next day. Right. And I managed to get just about through the apprenticeship. And I'm sure that when I was on my way to say I'm going to leave, he was on his way to tell me that I was going to leave also. Oh, you see, out. <laughs> yeah, out. So, There's scotch or two in this day. <laughs> Anyone? Hey, that's, that's not scotch, Mum, honestly. What, what is it? Tell you, Mum. It's, um, it's, uh, um, the drink you're having, you're not having a drink. What's oh, that one? I know uh, that one. Clayton's yeah, a good Clayton's, mate of mine. Clayton's tonic. Me What about the shoes? The last thing I noticed, I'm yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a nice, tactful oh, person. Well. And now, uh, what about the, into the area where you had Stella go around the rose and that? How did you meet up with that group? Well, that that was the questions, and um, yeah. they were a, a bunch of good musicians, and they didn't have a, a sort of singer as such. And mm. uh, I went down and did the talent quest one one night to let them hear me sing because I wanted really badly to to sing with this band. Right. So I did it, and uh, I came second. Uh, to this girl who sang these boots are made for walking with a, <laughs> a low-cut dress. Someone called Nancy. Uh, that's when I knew. That's when I knew. That's when I knew show business was going to be a real breeze. And, uh, but I started with the questions, and from there, really, that's where the, the career started. Really, with that band. Hi, I'm Marilyn Chambers, and I've just finished making the most erotic motion picture ever made. It's called Insatiable. With me on the screen are the biggest names in the adult film world. And I must thank the team tonight for asking you in <laughs> they are being kind to me it's certainly the best job I've had for years <laughs> ex cheerleader to star in your own movies how did that evolve can you explain how you got out of school the cheerleading and that and then into movies and into this side of the business <laughs> <laughs> side of the business <laughs> mm. I read an ad in the San Francisco Chronicle that said now casting for major motion picture and they said nothing about it being R-rated and uh, I met the Mitchell brothers, who were not the sleazy, you know, the casting couch bit. I mean, that, no. doesn't, that doesn't exist in these types of films. It does right. exist in the, in the other, the yeah. so-called straight, straight ones. Yeah, oh, really. So I found there are, uh, <laughs> The straight there ones get x-rated on the yeah. couch. And <laughs> x-rated. Why don't we do it on the screen? Straight, right. <laughs> I just want to get away from that thing that you do in movies like that. You do <laughs> also sing in country and western mm -hmm. bands and all these other things, which obviously you must feel good about. Oh, I love it. But I also like the, the other part, those, those films <laughs> that you're speaking about. I mean, you really to be able to enjoy live out, to do that. Oh, to be able to live out uh, probably very many women's fantasies mm. is uh, quite a thrill, and to be paid for it, too. <laughs> Would you get more of a thrill out of appearing with the country and western music band? 
not than you would making the movie? Not necessarily, because they're two different mediums entirely. Mm. And I really enjoy, I enjoy being versatile. And my mother always told me that I tried to do way too many things, but I think it's helped me in my life. Right. Because to be versatile and to be a little controversial is certainly very helpful. Been to Dunedin, left some sheep bleeding. <laughs> now I don't eat mutton stew. Fell in some sheep dip, it was a nice trip. At long last, Timaru. I must tell you that Naples is not my favorite city. I like Italy a lot, and I spend a lot of time in Italy, but in, in Naples, they think the World War II is still going on. I mean, the black market is still existing, still and people are coming up and saying, you want my mother, she's a virgin, you know. I'm a product of an age where uh, I was lucky because I ran away from home when I was 11, and I never had much schooling, and so nobody told me that you were supposed to specialize and do one thing. And by the time I learned that, uh, I've been doing a lot of different, different things. You'd call a jack of all trades within yeah, Well, I'm not sure area. if I'm master of any, but I'm working. But it. now I have a new heart throb, better than a hand job at long last. <laughs> <time. laughs> Dad is, of course, Slim Dusty. That's right, uh, yeah. How did it feel for you? Because your mum is a McKeon sister. Reg Lindsay is married to one of the McKeon sisters. So you've got Reg as your uncle. And so it goes yeah. on. How does it feel to come out of a family with such a background? Well, um, the thing is, it, it sets a really high quality control on what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really something to live up to. But, uh, of course, it's just been a sort of a way of life for me, really. Because mm. um, I, I started travelling when, when I was about two. Yeah. And uh, even when I started school and whatnot, I always went back and worked on the show during holidays, right through sort of school, uni, whatever, you yeah. know. I believe John Lennon was one that you yep. got together with very early in their career. Uh, in 65, I think. 65, first time, yep. Yep. been going for, what, three or four years. Mm -hmm. Frank Zappa, you're a good mate of? Yes, again. Um, in, particularly in the early days of his career, when mm -hmm. he first came to London. Right. Pink Floyd. Mm -hmm. You know a whole lot about Pink Floyd. Yeah. We'll get into other names in a moment. If I could stay with Lennon, though, when, when you talk to bands of today, I love the, the, the police, Sex Pistols, if you met them a couple of years ago, when you see them in that young, raw state, was Lennon any different at, in his young, raw state, or was he always fairly affable and easy to get along with or was he oh he was never affable and easy no. to get along with so no. was he always hard and maybe today they're a little easier what how do you find them i think uh, bands are very different now partly because in the days of the beatles they've been playing since about 56 mm. you know right through to right. 63 or 64 before they had any the big hits, hits. Right. They'd, they'd been on the road for years and years yeah they played 400 times at the, ca at the cavern in liverpool yeah so uh these days bands are they're part of a, a, a business machine, which is so totally different from how things were then. Mm -hmm. I think so, uh, but the their attitudes are different. I mean, as you, you were talking, I mean, they, they are concerned with video clips and things yeah. like that these days. Yeah. And much less concerned with going on the road, and much less concerned probably with relating to audiences. Uh-huh. I mean, so some bands have gone from, from today, zero to, to the top without even playing live at all. That's like right. uh, the Pretenders did that. Yeah. Would you say then that they're more difficult to, in your job, as oh, in my to job. get a story out of them? Uh, it's, be more difficult it's today? quite difficult, yeah. Because yeah. you have to get through so many more layers of people, apart from anything else. Right. So, okay, you say Lennon was never affable, but was he a man that you could go and say, oh, he was John, a... I want to do a story on you, and he would help? Sure, yeah. What about some of the other people, like Zappa? Was he an easy guy to get along with? He was easy because uh, I think he understood that I was genuinely interested in his music. It right. wasn't just a publicity thing or something set up by the record company. Yeah.